It is a, a great pleasure and honor for me to be here, and I wish to thank the, the organizers. First, uh, for the excellent idea uh, to organize uh, this meeting uh, uh, to honor the memory of Ennio de Giorgi, and second, for uh, having proposed to me to contribute to this, to this meeting uh, by, by a talk. Uh, it is very difficult to add uh, something uh, uh, about uh, Ennio de Giorgi. Much uh, has been uh, said, much has been also written. So I think I can limit uh, only to, to give uh, some very little uh, memory I had. Uh, I, I knew Ennio de Giorgi as a student. I was a student of uh, Scuola Normale and uh, he was my advisor, the advisor of my thesis, I was able to recover the cover, the cover of my thesis. <laughs> this, uh, at, that, at that time, no LaTeX was available. <laughs> the thesis was uh, type, uh, typewritten with symbols uh, handwritten. And the Georgi was the advisor. Su un tipo di convergenza variazionale was the beginning of a uh, gamma convergence theory, which had uh, an enormous uh, success. And then, uh, uh, quite soon, we became collaborators. We wrote uh, several papers together and uh, friends. So uh, this is uh, my memories. I was able to find a couple of pictures. Uh, I am unable to say the precise dates. This one should be at the end of the 70s. The location is uh, Erice in Sicily. Uh, it should be at the end of, uh, of uh, 70s. You can, you can recognize <laughs> several faces. I am here very young, so this, this is why I presume should be at the end of 70s. <laughs> and you see the Georgie in the first row. And this one should be at the end of the 80s. We are in Ferrara here. Uh, I was a professor in Ferrara for a while, so this is uh, an occasion of uh, his visit uh, uh, in Ferrara. Uh, also, I can uh, also give another memory I have. Ennio de Giorgi was uh, very careful, extremely careful, in, uh, most of you know this, uh, extremely careful in making conjectures. Most of the times uh, he said, uh, it would be interesting to study this problem, or it would be interesting to prove or disprove this fact, and in that case you could have bet 50-50 uh, about <laughs> the validity of the statement. But in some few cases, uh, he said, uh, my conjecture is, uh, in that case, you could have bet 99.9%. <laughs> so uh, let me pass to the scientific part. <coughs> I will try to explain what uh, worst case optimization are, and then in a very specific uh, situation, this is a joint work with uh, Jose Carlos Bellido, uh, who is in Castilla-La Mancha in the central Spain, and uh, Bojidar Velichukov, a former student of mine, who is now in Grenoble, France. Uh, I should apologize uh, about the acronym. <laughs> Worst case, you will see, I try to avoid uh, the WC <laughs> as an acronym. Uh, but uh, if you see in some uh, slides WC as an index, this uh, simply means worst case and nothing else. <laughs> so in order to, to explain what the worst case optimization is, uh, let, let me start from uh, a, a problem that everybody in this room knows optimization problem. Optimization problems are written usually in this form. There is a functional that uh, uh, has to be minimized over a class of uh, uh, functions. U belongs to some space x. 
and u is a state variable, and uh, f is the cost functional. So this happens, for instance, uh, in the calculus of variations, where the cost function is like that, is an integral functional, and the space x is usually a Sobolev, uh, Sobolev space. This happens, for instance, when you only observe, observe a natural phenomenon, and u is uh, the state variable which describes the, the phenomenon. So you simply observe what is happening, and when uh, you reach the equilibrium, this is the function u. So, but you are not allowed to interact with the system. You just observe from outside. Uh, a slightly more uh, refined category of problem is uh, what, what is usually called optimal control. Optimal control problem in this case is more refined because we have two variables. U is a state variable again, describes the, the state of the system, but this time you are allowed to intervene on the system by uh, this uh, second variable v, and so you can write the optimal control problem in this uh, form, and again, uh, u is in some space of states, v is in some space of controls, and uh, uh, u and v are linked, are linked to each other, usually by a partial differential equation. So uh, the control variable v represents the way we can interact with the system. And uh, this is a very simple example. You, you can take uh, as an example the stationary, stationary heat equation. So you see here, for instance, you would like to reach uh, u0, which you may think uh, to be the desired temperature. So the system uh, uh, works very well at some desired temperature. And this is minus uh, Laplacian U equal F uh, is the stationary heat equation where F uh, is the heat source density. But now you can uh, interact uh, uh, with the system by modifying, by adding or subtracting uh, some uh, heat source. And this is the variable V, and of course you pay this adding or subtracting heat to the system must be paid, and this explains the presence of this uh, alpha v square in the cost. So you want at the same time reach or being as close as possible to the desired temperature without spending too much into uh, this uh, uh, adding or subtracting heat to the system. And this is a very simple example of optimal control in which the two variables uh, play uh, an important role. But now, uh, let me emphasize the presence of f. Up to now, f is simply just uh, something, uh, just a given uh, datum uh, which appears here. But now I want to stress the role of uh, this right-hand side f so let me stress uh, uh, this uh, by adding this dependence uh, on f. Or if you don't like uh, the heat equation, you may think the vertical displacement of a membrane, the equation is exactly the same. Now, <coughs> in order to introduce this worst case analysis, you should think uh, that uh, in general, in most of the situations, the right hand side f is not completely known. <coughs> Well, you can, measure, you can measure the heat source or the vertical uh, load uh, on the membrane with some uh, uh, uncertainty. You don't know exactly, very precisely, what the right-hand side F is. So uh, now I can uh, explain uh, uh, where the worst-case analysis may uh, intervene. But uh, even uh, if we know uh, the right-hand side f with some uncertainty, we want to find a very good structure anywhere. So this is the problem. Uh, having uh, 
a partial knowledge of the data, but nevertheless, uh, we want to have a very good uh, structure anywhere, anyway. So there are two ways to operate, at least two ways to operate. The first one is to consider the right-hand side f given in some uh, stochastic sense. So some probabilities, so the f is known uh, through some probability, and this, uh, <coughs> this goes in the direction of uh, stochastic optimization. I will not uh, uh, speak about it. This is a very interesting direction of research, but I, don't, uh, I will not speak about that. Uh, there is another way to operate, uh, to consider the worst possible case. And this is uh, why the, the worst case analysis. The worst possible case for uh, the function f uh, among uh, the ones which are allowed uh, to be on the right hand side. More precisely, we assume that uh, the, the, the datum f uh, can be perturbed as f plus g with g uh, with some uh, uh, LP norm less than delta, delta relatively small. And so uh, we optimize the cost with respect to the worst possible case, which means exactly that. We consider the cost with f plus g, and we take the supremum with respect to g. And now we want to optimize not only the original cost, capital F, but this Supremo, this is FWC. I was not able to avoid <laughs> the WC in this case. So this is a worst case functional, which is constructed as a supremo. This has a consequence. Uh, the bad consequence is that a local problem becomes immediately non-local. And this may create, uh, may create some, uh, some difficulties. Due to this uh, supremum operation, the locality is in general lost. So the, the case I will consider is the case in which the control variable is not a function. In the previous example uh, I have shown of the heat equation, the control was uh, F plus uh, V. V was the control which uh, uh, varies in the L2 class, the class of function. In this case, uh, I will consider the control, the domain. So the domain, uh, omega, is the control. I, con I can control the system modifying the shape uh, of uh, omega. So we are in the framework of, of uh, what is called the shape optimization problem. So shape optimization with respect uh, to the worst case uh, possibility. So I should say that uh, other cases uh, uh, have been uh, considered in, in the literature. Uh, I can quote this, uh, this uh, paper by Grégoire Allaire and Dapogny, recent paper. Uh, in our case, uh, we want to show the existence, uh, if, uh, if any, of an optimal domain for uh, this problem. This is a the usual form for a shape optimization problem, but the difference is that now this uh, script f uh, is obtained as a worst case functional. So this uh, script f uh, is the supremum of uh, an energy functional where the right hand side f uh, is f plus g, and we optimize first, we take the supremum first with respect to g. So this is a problem I want to consider and discuss uh, if an optimal domain exists or not. And this uh, capital F is a given shape functional. So <coughs> the, the simplest case is uh, uh, to consider as a shape functional just the energy. The energy of the system and the energy is the, this Dirichlet energy. Huh? is the minimum in H10 of one half gradius square minus F times U. So this is the energy of the domain omega with respect to the choice F. So uh, 
The worst case functional in this case can be computed rather uh, easily because the worst case functional it should take this energy instead of f uh, I can perturb the f by writing f plus g and taking the worst possible situation which is this supremum with respect to g. So in this case this supremum can be easily computed because uh, here you see this is script f and I have to take the infimum of script f. So it is an inf soup problem. But th this inf soup is lucky because I can interchange the inf and the soup because we are in the good situation, convex, concave. There are many theorems guaranteeing that uh, the infimum and the soup can be interchanged and this is one of the cases. So if you interchange the inf and the soup, the inf can be easily computed and you get, uh, so the, the soup can be easily computed and you get uh, this expression where the, the, the g variable disappeared. So this is uh, the supremum with respect to g and now I have to take the infimum with respect to u. So you see the problem is now non-local because here this one is the local part and this is non-local because it is the LP norm of uh, the function u. But in all this uh, quantity, there is the domain omega, which is uh, hidden. And you see, this uh, seems uh, to not be dependent on omega. But actually, the omega variable is very important because you minimize here over functions u, which are 0 outside omega. So the omega domain intervenes right here. And so now we have uh, the worst case uh, shape optimization problem, which is written as a minimum of this uh, script uh, f functional. And uh, among uh, uh, all domains which are contained in a, in a big box, uh, capital D, and with the back measure prescribed, or at least uh, bounded by a given quantity m. So this is. Uh, the shape optimization problem in the worst possible case. And the question is, uh, is there a solution? Is there an optimal domain omega? In general, this is a very difficult problem, a very difficult question. Shape optimization problems are uh, extremely nasty because uh, the class of domains uh, is very narrow in the big class I will show in the next slide. So, you have to be extremely lucky to find a solution which is uh, a domain. In general, a solution is not a domain. But this is a very lucky case. I will show you why it is lucky. So uh, we should go back to this paper by Gianni Dalmaso and Umberto Mosco. And by chance, both are present in this room. Uh, we should go back to 1987. And so following the idea of uh, the Georgi, so they studied uh, what happens uh, to families uh, of uh, Dirichlet problems when the domains may vary. And they were able to characterize uh, the closure of uh, uh, this class of domains. And this was an extremely important fact that was uh, used in, in a lot of situations later. So they characterize uh, the closure of uh, uh, the Dirichlet problems. And uh, th this is a very large class. I, I don't need to describe. You should uh, speak about capacitary measures, actually the, the closure of uh, Dirichlet problems is the class of capacitary measure, which is a, a very big class. So in general, a shape optimization problem as not a domain as a solution, but only a capacitary measure. And in the class of capacitary measures, domains are a very, very little subclass. And uh, using uh, this uh, dalmaso mosco result uh, with Gianni, we were able to obtain uh, this very nice, I should say this is a very nice result, stating that in some lucky situations, you really have a domain as a solution. 
Of course, you need uh, some assumptions that are listed here. So this is the problem we want to, uh, we want to deal with. It's a shape optimization problem. A general functional capital F acting on domains and uh, uh, the admissible class of domains is the domains with the prescribed Lebesgue measure. So this, this problem uh, admits a solution provided these two assumptions are satisfied. So the first one may, may look technical because I should say what the gamma, small gamma convergence is, the gamma lower semi-continuous, but don't care. This, this uh, assumption is always satisfied in practical situation because, because this small gamma convergence is extremely strong, extremely strong. So it is very easy to be uh, gamma continuous or gamma lower semi-continuous. So forget about the first one. First one is always satisfied in practical situation. The very severe one is a second one. This is a very severe assumption. And uh, the, the cost, uh, the shape uh, functional cost, is assumed to be decreasing uh, for the set inclusion. This is quite severe. I mean, in many situations, this is not true. But if the, the, these two assumptions are fulfill it, then this problem admits uh, a classical solution, a domain as a solution, not uh, a general uh, capacitary measure. So this is a very beautiful result. And indeed, in this, uh, in this uh, worst case, we can apply this. Let's see why. Because if you look at this problem, this problem is certainly gamma, even gamma continuous. So the first assumption is for free. But the second one is also true. Because look, we minimize the value of the function is the infimum on h10 omega. So the Sobolev spaces with zero boundary condition are such that if you take a bigger set, the class of a Sobolev function is bigger. And if you minimize on a bigger class, the value diminishes. So this function is actually decreasing. So we can apply this, uh, this theorem, which is also very old, 1993. Uh, you can apply this theorem. You see the, the assumptions are verified. And so uh, an optimal domain actually exists. So this depends, I denote by omega delta m, because there, there is this delta and this m. This delta is due to the perturbation, the g perturbation, which is assumed uh, to be uh, with the LP norm less than delta. And the m is uh, this one. So once you fix the delta, the perturbation size, and the m, this theorem, gives you the existence of an optimal domain omega delta m for this problem. So the radial case, the radial case is interesting because you take a right hand side f of radial type. So f is a function of the radius and f is the, for instance, constant or decreasing function of the radius. Then you can show that if the admissible box is large enough, large to contain at least a ball of measure m, then uh, the optimal domain omega delta m, which is provided that by the previous uh, theorem, is uh, actually a ball. This is uh, the radiality uh, result centered uh, at the origin. Now I want to consider a slightly more uh, refined uh, version, because in the previous one, uh, I minimized the energy. And the energy, if you write down the Euler Lagrange equation, you get minus Laplacian U equal F. And by an easy integration by parts, the, the cost becomes simply minus integral of F times U. So the F appears in both uh, places, both in the state equation, minus, minus delta U equal F, and in the cost, because the energy is very particular 
as uh, uh, cost functional. The cost is minus integral of f times u. But in general, the, the un uncertainty only appears in the equation. Uh, the cost is absolutely clear what you want to, to minimize or maximize. There is no uncertainty in the cost. For instance, uh, in the thermic uh, problem uh, above, I said above, for instance, you would like to maximize the average temperature. There is no uncertainty here. You want to maximize exactly the average temperature without any doubt. The, the doubt is, on the contrary, in the, in the source. But the source is only in the PDE, not in the cost. So this is the case. This is a more difficult case. Uh, this is the case I want to consider now, in which uh, you want to maximize the average temperature. There is a weight, H, which is given. H equal 1, for instance. Without any doubt, no uncertainty. This is the, what you want to maximize, as a kind of average uh, temperature, but this is precise. And uh, you have the state equation in which the right-hand side F is not completely known. So the only uncertainty uh, has to do with F and not with H. H is completely given. So this is the example, uh, best shape for the average temperature under partially known only heat sources. The partial knowledge is only in the heat sources. So this time you cannot integrate by parts and do the trick uh, you did uh, with uh, the energy. So this time. Uh, uh, the, the writing the worst case function is slightly more difficult, but not too much, because now you have to write f plus g by keeping h fixed. The h does not move with g. Only the f moves with g. So you write f plus g instead of f, and you have to try to compute a worst case situation. To do that, uh, it is convenient to call R, R the resolvent operator of minus Laplacian. And so uh, just a little computation shows that you can write uh, the worst case function in this form. Again, uh, the non-locality occurs here. This is a local term, but this is a non-local one, where W omega is the solution of minus delta uh, W equal H. So this is the auxiliary PD. You solve this PD. You plug the solution into this cost. And this is the value of uh, the worst case function. Now the goal is uh, to, uh, to, to consider the minimization with respect to the domain of this uh, worst case uh, uh, function. And now uh, you can see. Uh, very easily that uh, uh, the assumptions of uh, the theorem uh, I got with Gianni are not anymore uh, valid. The gamma lower semi-continuity. The gamma continuity is still true. But uh, uh, now this function is not anymore decreasing. Because you see these two variables uh, interplay each other. Here there is a plus. Here there is a minus, and so the mono monotonicity uh, cannot be proved. So this function, in general, is not monotone decrease. So the, the theorem cannot be applied. So the good question is, uh, do we still uh, have the existence of an optimal domain? So I should say there are very, very few uh, examples in which an optimal domain uh, exists, uh, and uh, the theorem uh, I obtained with Gianni does not hold. I mean, all the cases I know, you have this monotonicity, and so the existence of an optimal domain goes uh, through the theorem. In this case, uh, uh, it is not possible. Nevertheless, uh, uh, this is uh, the result uh, we obtained. We, with uh, Jose Carlos and Bojidar. So 
H uh, is a the fixed function. H equal 1, uh, you get the average temperature is okay. If not, uh, H uh, non-negative is okay with some uh, summability assumption. So the F, uh, F is not known. F is the, the element that you have to perturb in order to get the worst case possibility. So these are some other assumptions. And uh, F is bigger than a certain constant. So now uh, we cannot prove uh, that uh, always uh, you have an optimal domain. But uh, the, the result is the following. There exists a delta bar such that if the, if the perturbation of the heat sources is small enough, is less than delta, which is less than delta bar, then an optimal domain exists. So for, for small perturbation of the right-hand side F, we can prove that still an optimal domain exists. And the proof, I, mean, I should say, it is uh, quite involved. Uh, it is uh, made by hand. I mean, no general theorem uh, is available in this, no, at least not uh, by now. <laughs> uh, I want to conclude by showing an interesting. Uh, oh, the major M is fi when delta, of course, the delta bar depends on small m. Yeah. Uh, I want to show a numerical example, uh, which uh, gives uh, the flavor of what may happen in this uh, situation. So we have uh, uh, D, the, the, the box is uh, 0, 1 by 0, 1. The P is uh, 2 in order to have uh, L2, because L2 is a very nice space. And delta is small. Delta is small, uh, 0, 0.25. So uh, the goal is, again, the energy uh, in both forms. I think in, the, in this numerical example, we took the energy. So if f, if f is a constant, uh, f equal 1. If f uh, was uh, a constant equal 1, the solution is clear. We are in the radial case. The solution is a disk. The optimal domain is a disk. But now uh, we take uh, this f uh, not constant. is 1 on the left uh, half uh, of the square and two on the right part of the square. So before looking at the numerical solution, what uh, do you think? Clearly, the domain, both in the unperturbed case and uh, uh, it will be even more evident in the perturbed one, tries to move in the safer part. The safer part is the part with two, because the domain tries to to minimize the energy. And uh, in front of F, there is a minus. So the domain tries to move uh, as much as possible, you will see in the picture, in the part, uh, on the right uh, part. This is the, the first guess. Second, uh, uh, the second issue, which is also very interesting, uh, you know, from the numerical point of view, handling domains uh, is uh, very difficult. Uh, handling functions is much easier. Handling domains is extremely difficult. So uh, we found a way to, to escape to, to these difficulties. Uh, instead of domains, uh, we take uh, these uh, uh, Schrodinger potentials, e to the minus alpha v of x. v of x is a potential. So this simulates very well what a domain is. Because you see, if uh, v equals 0, this exponential is 1. And if v is very big, this exponential is 0. So more or less, this uh, simulates uh, the, in, uh, the characteristic function of a domain. So instead of the domain, we take uh, this uh, quantity with alpha small. Uh, we can prove that uh, this uh, sequence of functionals, when alpha goes to 0, gamma converges to the functional uh, with the constraint to be a domain. And so this is a, 
the correction entering uh, in the numerical computation. <coughs> and the simulation has been done by Jose Carlos Bellido using this uh, method of moving uh, asymptotes, kind of gradient method, and a quite fine mesh. And look at what uh, happens. So this is the unperturbed case. No perturbation. The, the function f is perfectly known and uh, is the function I described. One in the left uh, half of the square and two in the right half of the square. So this is the unperturbed case. No worst case analysis here, just, uh, just uh, the, the, traditional, uh, the traditional deterministic analysis. And so you see the domain is the blue one. The blue one, of course, tries to move in the, safe, in the safe part, which is the part where f has the value 2. Of course, not completely, because uh, it would cost a lot should, uh, should uh, uh, have still a uh, roundedness, uh, uh, because it, it is minimizing the energy. So the round part should be present. But you see, this squeezes a little bit on the right. But look what happens uh, in the worst case analysis. In the worst case, uh, the domain is still more careful than uh, in, the, in the deterministic case. It's more careful, so the domain uh, tries to move even more on the right. You see, you, OK, I, I switch quickly from one in order to see the difference. Unperturbed, perturbed. You see, delta is small, so the, the difference uh, is clearly rather small. So this is what, uh, what happens uh, uh, for, the, for the perturbed case with delta rather small. So what is the philosophy? That in the worst case uh, problems, the domain are extremely careful. They try to be very, very safe, and they try to, to choose the safer part uh, of the, of the problem. In this case, uh, the safer part was clearly defined because f equal 2 on the right. And so here, you see the optimal state, the function u, the level set of the function u in the unperturbed case. And uh, this is the perturbed case. You see, again, uh, this uh, squeezing phenomenon to the right. And this is a 3D, a 3D picture. This is, again, uh, the unperturbed case, the function v of x, which simulates uh, the domain. This is the unperturbed case, and this is the perturbed case uh, with the, the small delta 0, 0,25. And to finish, just, uh, just uh, something in progress. So here, uh, this requires a lot of computation, omega delta, uh, potential, Schrodinger potential, uh, free fan plus plus analysis, and so on. But uh, there should be an easier way to do that, but not yet, uh, not yet well uh, uh, understood and established. So the expected result is that omega delta, of course, should uh, uh, be very close to omega when delta is small. So omega delta gamma conver small gamma converge to omega, should gamma converge to omega when delta goes to 0. And then you could expect that this omega delta is nothing but the old omega plus or minus uh, a boundary layer sigma delta, which uh, uh, has a local thickness delta times h of sigma. Sigma is the boundary variable. So uh, we expect uh, an asymptotic uh, result uh, saying that uh, the optimal domain for the perturbed case is nothing but uh, the domain of the deterministic uh, problem plus uh, plus in the sense that uh, this h may, may have a uh, uh, sign, plus or minus, a boundary layer, sigma delta, described uh, in, in this way. Sigma delta is, uh, is the boundary variable plus uh, this uh, uh, boundary layer. 
for a suitable function h to be characterized uh, such that the integral of h is zero because the measure is prescribed. So uh, this is uh, the expected result on which uh, we are uh, concentrating right now. And with this, I can uh, stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Just a quick comment about the capacity and domains. A quick comment about the capacity and domains. Uh, you were saying that the, you referred to this paper, the Maso Mosco 87, and you said this was following ideas of the George in Pisa. Uh, this, this is incorrect. The story is different. If you want to have the story, which will not be given here, we have to move to Genova. We have many friends from Genova, and to 67, and then uh, started. It actually was even before there were German people. So about capacity and movement of domains is a bit more complicated. Yeah, uh, let me let me reply. I know probably uh, only a part of the of the story, uh, the, the the Pisa the Pisa part of the story. The Pisa part of the story actually started uh, from something else. Gianni remembers surely. It started from the study of obstacle problems. So. Uh, the George idea was start with obstacle problems. And in fact, uh, in the, some years before, uh, a lot of works have been done on obstacle problems. But again, in obstacle problems, the same, uh, the same difficulty appears that uh, people now know very well. There may be thin obstacles that are obstacles uh, in which the capacity is positive thin obstacles. And then, uh, little by little, this uh, theory of uh, capacitary measures uh, uh, developed. I remember a, a paper by Dalmaso and Longo in which uh, these obstacle problems uh, were treated. And then uh, this idea of capacitary measures uh, uh, started to be formed. And then probably uh, the, the, two, the two facts uh, had uh, No, this is uh, only a part of this. Okay, good. Are there more questions, comments on the other side? Uh, yeah. Is it clear uh, what happens when delta is large? So you, your analysis was some sense uh, asymptotic well, for a small delta, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, natural, the natural... Uh, I mean, you mean that the existence theory? Yes, no, I don't know. Uh, actually, I don't know. I, I would expect that if delta is uh, above the threshold, uh, instead of domains, uh, you may have capacitary measures. I would expect... Of course, yeah, I did not say that uh, in shape optimization problems, you have already, uh, always a fight between homogenization and uh, domains. So uh, if uh, homogenization wins, the result is that uh, uh, the optimal solution is a capacitary measure. On the contrary, in some lucky cases, the homogenization uh, lose and uh, classical domains uh, win. And this is the case when the, the cost is decreasing or these other but I, w I would expect that when delta is not small, not, not even large, not small, uh, homogenization wins. Thank you. Any more questions? OK, so if not, let ah, there is one question. Yeah. Actually, Just one second. Uh, well, this is a very difficult question. Well, in this case, I, can, I, cannot, in this case, I cannot answer. But I can say that uh, in shape optimization problems, uniqueness is extremely rare situation. So I mean, you may have uh, 
such a big amount of variable to handle that uh, uniqueness in general. I don't know. In this case, maybe it is a very lucky one. Um, I, I think see. Thank you. Any more question? Yeah, maybe in connection with the uniqueness, do you think that by this approximation you can select uh, better solutions? This is, uh, this is what, uh, what we expect. Uh, what expect? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one uh, selected by the boundary layer uh, should be the, the natural one, say. The best one. Any more questions, comments? Okay, so if not, let's thank Giuseppe again.